this is interesting. I'd never noticed this before. This entrance to Lopping Hall and this beautiful frieze here commemorating the Act of Parliament which saved uh, Epping Forest for the people but it took away the lopping rights of the people of Loughton and they were given this hall in return. It is great to be back in Epping Forest. It's the 11th of October today, so we're well and truly into autumn. And there's been days recently where it's felt like winter, to be honest with you. And I love to come into Epping Forest in each of the seasons. And this is the first time since, uh, since summer, since high summer, in fact. And it's fantastic. Today we're going to go out to uh, the Lost Pond. And I don't think I've ever found the Lost Pond. And, I'm certainly not aware of consciously going, this is the Lost Pond, so that's my real target for today. There's a couple of other little pockets over there that I'm not entirely sure I've walked before and they're not in any videos. So I'm really looking forward to this walk today. I really need the restorative properties of the forest. The gorgeous babbling waters of the Loughton Brook. There's a video on my channel here where I walk the length of the Loughton Brook. So a really delightful walk there. So it's still obviously mushroom season in the forest. It's great to see so many people out in the forest today, but uh, I quite like to go through the trees a bit and kind of get away from the crowds. It does mean there's a strong chance of me <laughs> losing my direction. I've already look. blocked away there. Holly there, so I'm kind of penned in a little bit. I'm going to go through the holly, I think. The fungi really do look like they could be from another world, don't they? I, I talked before about the idea that somehow fungi communicate with each other, that there are these vast networks beneath the ground that connect the fungi and that somehow they represent some sort of, I don't know, collective organism that's possibly connected to the roots of the trees. I mean, maybe we're the kind of, sort of, dumbest thing wandering around in the forest. <laughs> well, I mean, I am, can I speak for myself, I guess. now after an incredibly dry summer we're going to be wading through ankle deep mud now for the next six months <laughs> when I'm walking along here by the Loughton Brook it makes me think of all the various bits of forest lore legends of Boudicca and Dick Turpin or even Casavalanus of the king of the Catavalunae he's been linked with the area by some all sorts of myths and legends are connected with the forest. Less of a myth and a legend is the fact that the, uh, the great sculptor and painter Jacob Epstein lived in Loughton and he used to come and paint in Epping Forest and there's a painting of a pond that somebody told me they thought was the lost pond so it'll be interesting to see if it matches up. Following the Loughton Brook as far as Baldwin's Pond and then I'll go up the hill from there to hopefully find the lost pond. It's great when it's raining and you're in the forest and you can just hear the pitter-patter of the rain on the leaf canopy with the odd drop getting through. Perfect place to be in the rain. It's important when you're uh, out for a walk in the forest just to allow yourself the time just to sit on a log or under a tree and just absorb the, 
the spirit of place. inspiring about this part of the forest, the way the trees loom over the Loughton Brook. You have to marvel at the diversity of London when you consider some of the recent walks, like when I walked down through Leighton Stone to West Ham Park, and then when we were walking through central London, up through Bloomsbury and down through Soho to Piccadilly Circus, and now we're in this glorious forest. And it's all part of the same city part of the same ecosystem. So here we have Baldwin's Pond and just up the hill from here should be the Lost Pond. <laughs> this path here up through the trees should lead us to the Lost Pond. Just before the ground begins to drop steeply to the valley there is a pond set deeply in the dense surrounding of trees. It is right on the hilltop and actually overlooking Bell Ringer's Hollow. I've had to come back onto the clay road to kind of get my bearings again because I was losing my way in the woods there. So if I go along the clay road, turn right, and then turn right back into the trees, hopefully I'll find the lost pond. So according to the Urban Ordnance Survey app, if I just turn into the trees here, the lost pond is straight ahead. Let's do it. Let's plunge back into the forest, into the unknown. We are now tantalizingly close. The lost pond is about to be found. I think it's just straight up there. And I guess this must be the lost pond. I've actually never been here before, not that I can remember anyway. It's a really magical little spot, isn't it? The pond is not a natural one. It was made many years ago by supplying Loughton with gravel. But nature and the passing of the years have concealed the scars and the pond has settled beautifully into the forest scene. Somebody has left some white roses here in the water, or beside the water. I don't know that it has an official name. I've heard it called the gravels or the top pond. To us, it is always known as the Lost Pond. This part of the forest is one of the favourite haunts of Jacob Epstein, the sculptor. I have many times seen him painting, more often in the autumn, in the vicinity of Monk Wood, seated before his easel and canvas, oblivious or indifferent to the infrequent passerby. Many of his pictures show the brilliant colours of the autumn in the beech woods, the forest dressed in its reds and yellows and oranges. On one occasion, by the Lost Pond, where I came across him working, we discussed painting and photography and composition in pictures, and I mentioned how we had come to give the name to the pond. Oh, it feels like, a, feels like a real moment to find the Lost Pond. Of course, there is a little nagging down my mind that this isn't the Lost Pond, that in fact it's a different pond, and I'm sure someone's going to say in the comments, no, sorry, that's not the Lost Pond. Even so, it's really... It feels special to find these little pockets of Epping Forest that I've never really been to before. And this is, the, I'm pretty sure this is one of them. So we're going to push on now down towards Thaden Boys. And it's about um, quarter to six, half an hour till sunset. I did spend the winter kind of coming out into Epping Forest about a couple of hours before sunset and ending up navigating my way through the pitch black. I am okay at doing that now but um, I'm gonna, I want to go down towards Deer Shelter Plain I think and go that way into the Thaden Boys which is where this walk should end but of course with me you never really know. The Lost Pond is only one of several such attractive spots to be found in the woods for the forest only yields the secret whereabouts of these places to those who know her intimately. This is quite a steep climb here up this hill out of Bill Ringer's Hollow. 6.15 now, sunset time. 
not much of a sunset, not that I could see it from within the trees anyway, but I kind of knew when I left home today that even though I plotted a fairly modestly length walk that I would ultimately be walking into the darkness. And we're just going to find a path actually that takes us down to Debden Green, I hope. That's the plan anyway. There's a really pungent smell of crab apples in the air. It's quite intoxicating. And this is the source of the smell. And this is the path that should lead us down to Debden Green. It's pretty dark now, but not completely pitch black. This little path here, past these old, I think they're farm buildings, down to Debden Green. Just going to go along Debden Lane in the dark now. At the end of here, eventually, it's Stadium Boys Station. So I'm at uh, Thaden Boys Station now, at the end of the walk. It's too dark to film anything along the way. There's a few images there, but thanks for coming with me on this uh, glorious Epping Forest walk. Autumn in Epping Forest and the quest for the lost pond. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And as ever, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be.